Okay, welcome everyone. I think we can get started now. Um, I'm just going to introduce Karen and then we can start uh, the session, this very exciting session with one of our partners, Too Simple, who are known for Purple Mash and Python in Pieces mostly. Um, so thank you, Karen, for being with us today. Uh, Karen is a dedicated edu change maker and ed disruptor. Uh, she is an educational consultant that champions innovative approaches to education. She has 29 years of career experience spanning teaching and leadership roles. Uh, and we're very happy to have her here with us today. She holds advanced degrees and has presented extensively on educational technology and pedagogy. Pa she's passionate and effective about effective educational transformation and offers expertise in strategic planning and future focused educational change. So let's join her today in shaping the future of education. She's gonna present for us. Thanks, Karen. Thank you so much, Donata. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be sharing this topic, I must admit. I love exploring the idea of fifth IR and what's happening, and also seeing what's happening with the fourth IR. And I truly believe that Purple Mash is a tool that can assist you. So I'm really excited to be sharing with you and actually getting involved into this discussion. So the fifth industrial revolution really promises a future where automation and artificial intelligence will really transform the way we live and we work. And so therefore, as teachers, we really need to think about how are we changing the way we're teaching. And so therefore, we need to explore these ideas ourselves and become confident in this. So for our children to thrive in this very fast changing world, we as teachers need to equip our children with skills for success. Let's see what that might look like. So Purple Mash is driving how learners can succeed in a fifth industrial revolution world. So if we look at the range of Purple Mash tools, you will see that they cover a vast range of fourth industrial revolution tools. They've got an internet of things type tool. You can work with animations and digital art and digital music. You can even do 3D printing with their tools. Data analytics, coding, simulation, robotics, cloud computing and e-gaming. These are all things that we're aware of. So let's see how we can use these to change the way we teach. Remember now that artificial intelligence is inside all of these within the world that we work. And so if the children know how to use these tools effectively without AI, when the AI gets put in, they'll really succeed. So the first tools we want to think about are digital music. Purple Mash has a range of incredible digital music tools to beat, to sequence, to explore, and busy beats where children can actually go in and learn about rhythm and can go as far as creating their own music and downloading it. When we look at that, we're preparing students for a range of different careers. If we get our music teachers involved, it's the kind of space where they can really be exploring digital music alongside the traditional um, use of tech, of uh, traditional use of music tools. So the kinds of careers we might see children going into might become digital musicians, moving into the industry as a whole, or production, or editing, or even making little music assets. Most of these are created from a digital viewpoint of some shape and form today already. Think about children who are interested in this, how that could appeal to them. Another tool that I truly love within Purple Mash is called To Paint a Picture. With inside of To Paint a Picture, there are all these many little apps that you can see. So if you, are the mu if you are the art teacher, you can use these tools really to create concepts, to get children to really understand what it means to create and to replicate digital art from a traditional point of view. On top of that, you could be preparing them for a range of digital art type careers that children might be interested in. Another tool that I really love is To Design and Make. To Design and Make is a tool where children go in and they can draw in 2D, they can see the template, 
and they can see the 3D view. They can add points within it, so to reshape and create their own things and add their own color within that space. But what you can do with inside of To Design and Make is not only download a paper print and fold it up and make a paper model, but you can actually go into the settings and download an SDL file and then 3D print what your model actually looks like. Here's an example of a school that did a creative task with Purple Mashes to design and make, and children created a range of 3D printed objects according to the spec that the teacher has given. 3D printing is a huge career opportunity, and there are a range of different careers that children could do from this space. So think about how teaching this tool is preparing children for a job that they could potentially do. Another tool that I really love is to animate. To animate is where the students can go in and actually create an animation and see how the animation works. Have a look over here and see how this um, thunderstorm comes in. Children can add sound to it. They can add voice to it or other images within that space. So to animate is another amazing creative tool. These can be downloaded and exported as GIFs, which could then be shared in a range of platforms or school letter, uh, newsletters or all sorts of things to get the children um, or parents seeing what the children are really doing within the platform. So here's to simulate. To simulate is really great from that point of view. And you can see how it can be used in terms of creating simulations. And your children can use to create a story to actually make their own simulations. The careers around here are wide in range. So software engineering, process simulation, and modeling some um, an, an analysis is really great for your children. Then looking at creating um, your own e-gaming solutions. I think it's important to empower our children so that they become creators and not just users. In 2 design, 2DIY 3D, the students can actually play the example that's there, but they can go in and create their own 3D games and put levels in and create the backgrounds and the images and the avatars, even with other tools with inside of Purple Mesh. So really getting children to be aware of gaming, teaching them the value of becoming a, a game developer and how you can actually analyze and look at the games and explore that further could be a really interesting task for your students to do. And then if we're looking at the coding um, tools that Purple Mesh has, here are two that you can see. So we've got two code where the students go in and it's a block-based coding program. There are three levels of difficulty and there's a wonderful progression that they work through. On top of that, there is a free code area for each of the levels where the children can then go and do whatever they like within that free code section with the code they've learned. And there are built-in assessments within that space. To logo, as I said earlier, was built on the plat was built is the platform built by Seymour Papert from MIT, and it's a text-based coding language, and it's really great if you're teaching geometry or 2D and 3D shapes, getting children to code to make the shapes. But it can be used across a range of other um, subject contexts as well. And then there are the tools that can actually reinforce your planning skills, such as to chart which is teaches children how to make flow charts. There even is a section into chart which tells you the names of the different icons. So children actually begin to use flow charts from a really knowledgeable point of view rather than guessing what the little shapes actually mean. The other tool that they've got in terms of coding is Python in Pieces. Python in Pieces is separate to the Purple Mesh platform. But it is something that Too Simple offers, and it can be embedded into your Purple Mesh one if you are a school that's using both types of code. Python in Pieces is fantastic in that you've got a text based coding and you've got block based coding. So your text is the Python language, and the students can actually code in either the straight Python language and it'll make the code blocks for you, 
or you can work in the block code section of Python and it will change the Python. You can also choose to switch one or the other off so that you're only seeing one screen and there's a progression of learning within that space. And as you know, from a coding point of view, there are a range of jobs that we could be teaching our students about. For me, data is a really important thing. And I think as teachers, we don't look at it enough. But we also need to be teaching our students, even from young, how to create, store, and analyze the data that they are using. And there are two wonderful tools within the space, to graph and to calculate gives the children a real good sense of how we can use um, or understand data. Two graph can make a wide range of different types of graphs. You can look at data sets and you can get children to analyze the data. And then to calculate is a spreadsheet type tool where the children can actually learn the basic funds of spreadsheets, creating activities and analyzing data. Data detective is a game. And it's really wonderful. There are, is an example within the space where you are an alien playing an within an, an alien Olympic Games. And you've then got to sort the data to find different characters or find some of the unusual sports. So it's a really great introduction to how we filter content, how we understand how databases work. And it's a fun way that they don't even realizing what it is. But you can be teaching children about spreadsheets in this really fun and creative way that the children can really understand the concepts that when you're saying to them, let's filter and change, they can see that. There are a wide range of um, data skills. And the one for me, I think we need to be doing a lot as teachers is learning how to analyze the data how to really visualize our data to share with our parents, our heads of department and our principals, and how to create data stories and be a data storyteller so that they understand what you are seeing and how it's of benefit to the learners that you teach. Another great feature that Purple Mesh has is robotics. The robotics within the space, they are a few examples, two examples that I want you to show. Both of them use micro bits. So inside of to code, there is a free micro bit simulator where the children can go in and write their code and get the micro bit to react in a range of different ways. For me, that's really great. You could then download that code looking at the little blue arrow at the top as an example. And that then can be put onto a real micro bit and used. The other is using logo. So using the two logo app, you um, could get these little robots and you could ask the two simple team or the two um, in South Africa, how you can get them at your school. You then go in and you calibrate your, your robot. Your robot then gets programmed um, using the micro bit. So whatever you wanted to draw or move as for um, using logo. So you can see there's a picture of a hexagon with some lines in between. That was a code I wrote for the little robot. And then you could put a pen or a pencil into it. So you can see the little hole in the top of the little robot and put it on a large piece of paper. And then when you've downloaded the code into your micro bit and popped it into your robot, your robot would then draw the shape. So really using the tools to teach the skills of coding and then to get the children to be in, uh, showing how it actually works with inside the robot. Robotics is also a huge field and there are lots of different areas that we could be explaining to the children to become um, or, or to take on as careers. So for example, becoming the structural engineers of the physical robots or being the software engineers designing the code to, for the robots to follow. Purple Mesh even has an Internet of Things application. This is a little app that is called Purple Chip. It is inside of two code. If you look at the example, you can see the kinds of things that you could get a cell phone to react to. So the device that you're using here 
is your cell phone. Just as if you were wearing a smart watch and it tells you you're walking too fast or you've got an appointment, your children can write a piece of code. You then scan a barcode. With the phone that scanned the barcode with the chip, the phone will then react to whatever the code is programmed to do, whether it's flash or vibrate, whether it's to show text or an image. It's really fantastic and is a great way to introduce children to the Internet of Things and give them a really practical example of how you can be using the Internet of Things and they can be controlling it. For me, that's so exciting. The range of jobs is also incredible, from industrial Internet of Things software engineers all the way through to the Internet of Medical um, things that engineers could be exploring or agricultural and a range of different types of other options. So creating an awareness around these kinds of roles, I think is also important for children. Purple Mesh is a cloud computing solution. There are a range of those, but making the children aware of what cloud computing is and how it works is really important. For me, the biggest advantage of cloud computing is that you don't lose information or documents because it's stored on the cloud that you trust. There are also careers that we could be telling our children about from a cloud computing point of view. And so linking the reality of what careers are with tools that they're using that they might not think of as important is a really important thing that as teachers, we often forget to mention that things like this are used in the real world and showing them examples like that. So Purple Mesh promotes and inspires the fourth industrial revolution skills. Perp the future readiness type scenarios in which they are using innovation and critical thinking and creative thinking, um, looking at IT skills and development are really, really important and saying, how do we actually use these things and how do we make it beneficial for our students? I really think it's something which is vital in terms of Purple Mesh and how we're actually using it. So now if we begin to explore 5IR and how that's important. So important consideration we need to be aware of is that the focus in the fifth industrial revolution is not technology's raw power alone. It's the true transformation happens when it lies in two different things. The first thing is synergy. And the second thing is ethics and values. And this was described by Noble and his group of academics in 2022. So let's explore this further. Purple Mesh is driving learners to succeed in a 5IR world. So we have synergy within our space if we want to see success. We have humans on the one way, on the one side, and it's finding ways for humans and technology to complement each other's strengths, leading to outcomes greater than the sum of their parts. That's the synergy that we want in terms of the fifth industrial revolution. And so if we think about just the things I've shown you already, Purple Mesh is promoting the synergy, getting children to understand these concepts and work within that space. The second one I spoke about is ethics and values in terms of how they're describing the future with fifth IR. So we've got these huge technological advancements that are happening and they are ensuring that they must be guided by strong ethical principles. For me, that is so very important that we need to be talking about the values and the ethics, how we use AI, what is the future, what are the parameters, what are the implications, and those values need to be centered on human well-being and societal benefit. So if you're getting your children to use AI or if you're using AI at school, remember that you need to be kind, that you need to be polite, as well as getting it to do the tasks that you want it to be. We never know where the AI that we are teaching is going to land up. And so that then is the importance of ethics and values. Having a policy around how you're going to be using AI 
at your school is also just as important and building in the ethics and values and how it will be used within your school space. So Purple Mesh, if you think about it, really promotes ethics and values. They have a huge portal of all sorts of things, teaching children to care for each other, digital safety, being kind to each other, friendships, group work, all of those things. So if we then think about this, let's explore this a little bit further. The fifth R considerations then go a bit further because it talks about human and technology intertwined into in relationships. If you look at this table, which um, was is adapted from what Noble has said, you'll see that on the left hand side, we've got technological strengths going from low to high. And these are in the middle of this table. We've got weaker technological strengths, which they talk about as basic automation, data storage and retrieval and process optimization. You've then got a moderate level, which is still on the low side, which is looking at predictive analysis, machine learning, basic and narrow tasks and natural language um, processing models. We then start to move up into the higher section, where we're looking at stronger technological strengths, so collaborative systems to facilitate effective human and machine teamwork, advanced machine learning, and explainable AI, so XAI. And then our top level talks about the strongest technological strengths, and they're seeing those at the moment as human-centered artificial intelligence, which is an augmented human, which augments human capabilities, it supports human judgment, it works in tandem with human expertise. So artificial intelligence, general intelligence is your next level, and this they are just seeing as a hypothesis yet. And then you've got quantum computing as well within that top bracket. So within the first space, it's described as where we're looking at your low level of, of technology and your low level of human strength. So going across human strength at the bottom, we've got from human technology under utilization to human focus on the other side. And then if we go up, we've got technology focused and then we've got human technology collaboration. So in this first little box, we've got humans perform repetitive mundane tasks without the aid of technology or machines, packing or unpacking items, lifting, sorting, storage, monitoring of stock outs and fast food frontline employees might be examples. Going across now, looking at your human strengths, but still your low technological use, you've got services that require empathy or creativity, Problem solving and technology assistance is really used within these spaces, but it may be beneficial. So, for example, elderly care, child care facilities, or smaller family-run businesses. Then moving up into your higher usage, you've got your retails and services that rely on automation rather than human empathy, creativity, or problem solving. However, the human traits are often needed. For example, customer care centers. And then we've got human technology collaboration. For me, I love this description by Guri and Eden from 2019, who spoke about in this collaborative space, it's where the humans and the machines dance together to engage in effective societal well-being. And I love that the dance together goes with the ethics and the values around effective societal well-being. Humans conduct emotion-based and creativity tasks, and the machines do most of the other things. So if we think about that, and if that's where they're predicting the world is going, how are we thinking about the way we teach our children? How are we changing the way we teach our children? For me, that becomes exceptionally important. And so they might have the 21st century learning skills, but how are we preparing them for this fifth IR? So as teachers, we need to start saying, how are we teaching differently? We really need to build higher order thinking skills. Our learners must be able to validate, analyze, evaluate information. And so if we take Bloom's taxonomy and think about those levels, we need to think about how does this now impact our lessons? 
For years, we've been saying we want to develop critical and creative thinkers. But let's think about it from this context. So our first two levels, understanding and remembering, are lower order thinking. Our learners must have a good base knowledge. If you want people to analyze and apply information, it doesn't mean that they don't need to learn these things. They do. They need a good base knowledge. Just think of what's happened with our PEARLS results. If children can't read properly, they won't be able to analyze information to read. And so we still need the importance of getting the children to have a good base knowledge. But we must be getting higher. We must be going into a space where the children are able to easily apply their information and analyze it. And this is not a high school thing. This is something we should be beginning with our ECD children, getting them to talk about and analyze things. They are able to do that. And so we need to build it in our lessons. So learners must be encouraged to ask questions, not the teacher asking all the questions all the time. We should be saying to our children, what do you see? What did you learn? Give me your ideas. Go and find out and come back. They must show an understanding and be able to apply the knowledge that they've learned. But we definitely want to get all of our children up into that higher order thinking bracket. We want them to be analyzing, evaluating, and creating. We're wanting them to be thinking out of the box. We're wanting them to draw conclusions and be innovative. It's exceptionally important that they do that. We need to be developing learners who are critical thinkers, who are problem solvers, and who are creators and not just consumers of content, but really are at the forefront. And I think we could do that in every single class that we teach. And if you just look at the tools we explored earlier that Purple Mash is offering, I really believe that you are able to do this with the Purple Mash tools. So now, if we think about that and saying we want our children to be developing their fourth uh, 21st century skills, how do we do this with critical thinking? Well, Purple Mash can help you here too. Inside of Purple Mash, there are these four wonderful tools that can be used that also have many pre-made resources made with them already. Two question is a branching tree question type tool, which is really difficult to get children to think about how they break their questions down further and really gets them to begin thinking um, high into higher order thinking type strands. Two quiz is a tool which is auto marked and you can ask a range of types of questions. Don't just stick to knowledge and recall, please go up above. And then you've got to do it yourself type tools where there are matching words and games and a range of things. And these are really great for the little children, but they're also great for older children to use to build their knowledge in terms of um, creating them themselves and to be used as a refresher or as um, a tool that they can be revising their work with. Text toolkits are also great for filling in words or missing answers or analyzing information and having to fill in pieces. So think about how you can be developing questioning skills using these types of tools. Yes, you as the teacher can use them and give them to the children, but the children can be using them to be creating questions. Children can be creating quizzes that other children answer, evaluate, see if the questions were of higher order thinking. So we don't necessarily have to, as teachers, be making all the things. We can be empowering the children that they learn how to create within the tool, and they create them, which builds their knowledge, builds their experience, and their friends can be assessing it and using the tools within that space. Think of the critical thinking that could be happening within that space. What about getting the children to build their communication and analytical skills? If we want the AI to be looking at societal needs and the well-being of people, we need to remind children to be doing that. So tools such as to email, to graph, to type, and to publish are tools where the children can be taught how to communicate with each other, how to communicate in an appropriate way. They can be taught how to communicate effectively so that when they're typing, they type really accurately and they're not wasting time because their typing skills are bad. And if your typing skills are good, then you can do a range of different things. 
It also could be used then to be reinforcing your um, spelling and comprehension when you are typing. Then you've got to graph that I spoke about earlier. So creating visual forms of communication. And to publish plus has a range of different tools within that space where children can actually be showing how to communicate through a poster or through a newsletter or a range of your traditional type publishing tools. And inside of to email, there's this wonderful thing called to respond where an automated email has been created and the children can learn how to communicate effectively. You can see the children's responses. They could be having a chat with uh, Mandela, or it could be a malware type email that they are responding to. So teaching them a range of skills to be analytical, to be wise, responsible digital citizens. So building on the analytics and the comprehension, we want a, a communication. We want our children to be analyzing, evaluating, and creating. We're wanting them to be able to collect and process and interpret data, to make informed decisions and solve problems, to analyze complex situations, to identify elements, to apply strategies, make decisions, and determine the relationships in solving problems. The communication skills is we want them to have the ability to be active listeners, not just always talking, but listening to others in a group, to be clear in terms of their own knowledge so that they can express it with confidence, to be empathetic when somebody else is commenting, and not just to be critical, but listen, evaluate, and then respond. Using nonverbal communication is also important. So, for example, data visualization to being assertive. So if they're quiet and don't want to share, realizing that we all have a voice and we can all share our views. So if you think about that in terms of Purple Mesh, there are a range of tools where you can reinforce the skills of inspiring children to be respectful when they're working in teams. So to investigate, to write, to blog, and to connect are all tools where you can have multiple users inside them. You can be teaching children how we can work together in a fun, respectful, kind way, but still completing the tasks, not dominating each other, and really working together to come up with an amazing solution. So building in the values and ethics. And for me, this is really important. If we have effective teamwork within our schools, if children start seeing the value of each other, no matter who you are in a classroom, because you're working in teams, it cuts down on bullying and all sorts of other things. And at the same time, it's building ethics and values. Another great space inside a Purple Mesh where children can go and review things is inside of the sharing tab at the top of the screen, and then you go into school display boards. Here, the school can add sections. It could be just a class, it could be a grade. You can decide if just your class can see it, if just the school can see it, or if it gets shown out to the rest of the world. And within this space, here your students can actually put the work that they've completed. You can either allow them just to put it straight away, or you can vet it and verify it and then put it out. And then if it's a game or activity, other people can play it and see it. And so your children can actually go in and evaluate and analyze other people's work and see what they actually like and have a discussion then around the quality of work, perhaps according to a rubric and use it as part of an assessment. So for me, what we're wanting in terms of artificial intelligence and using all of these amazing tools is we really want to make the children aware of internet safety and how to be safe online. And in so, we are also teaching them about values and ethics. So if we teach children to focus on empathy, care, kindness, and respect, whether they're speaking to a human or whether they're speaking to an AI, I think we'd go a long way in terms of how the dance between the computers and the humans will end up being. So Purple Mesh promotes creativity as well within the space. 
I've shown you a range of these tools already. But in another two that I didn't speak about before are to create a story, which is like a, a, your PowerPoint presentations or slides on steroids. You can do so many amazing things that even your little children can do in terms of how they can be creating their own stories, hyperlinking, adding voice, um, animating things, making different types of solutions so you can cho choose which way you want to go. Really great tool for little children to use and get them to be thinking creatively, analytically, and really um, getting their higher order thinking up there. To Publish Plus is just a more advanced version than To Publish that we spoke about earlier. A wide range of publishing documents that the children could also explore and use from that point of view. So if we think about what Sir Ken Robinson said so many years ago, where he said creativity is now as important as literacy. And we should treat it with the same status. How are you as teachers allowing for creativity in every lesson? And I mean every lesson. Maths, geography, history. The language teachers often do it because they're writing creative writing stories or perhaps they're writing a poem. Your arts are doing it. But what about your other subjects? How are you as the maths teacher driving creativity? We need to think differently if we aren't. Talk to your colleagues and see what they are doing. See how you can drive this creativity so that everybody succeeds. And then within the whole school space, if we look at our whole school environment, if teachers are treating each other kindly, if, if their children see us and mimic that behavior, we will end up with a school environment where there's empathy, care, and kindness and respect. And if we then use that with our digital, just imagine the amazing space we would have. So we now have children who have intellectual success. Their learning and understanding and challenging is really going well. They have material success because they feel that they're fulfilled because they're creating things. They have emotional success because they see the positive in relationships and their own self-esteem is really great. And then we get them to be adaptable because things change so quickly today. And if you think about that, Purple Mash's virtual learning environment is really in increasing future readiness for your students. It's really preparing them for that. But on top of that, Purple Mash have these amazing um, online safety tools, a range of them to teach the children about being aware of what online means, meeting online um, comparisons, online safety tips, what kind of dilemmas happen, um, anti-bullying posters. And so using those resources alongside of everything else, it just builds into adding the ethics and values, the human well-being and the societal benefits to our children, really teaching them to be responsible and respectful digital citizens. So we enhance their 21st century skills. They will succeed in the, in the fifth industrial revolution with their critical thinking, their communication skills, their collaboration skills, and their creativity. We need to think about how we're going to do that in all of our lessons as we prepare our learners for a future of opportunities and challenges, a future which we're not sure is going to look like. But we can help the children get there if we think about how we're planning our lessons. So think about the way you're going to do the assisting with your learners. Thanks, everyone. I think another thing that's also worth mentioning, um, which is not completely related to the presentation that you did now, Karen, Karen sorry, is um, that we integrate with Too Simple now. So in case you didn't know, if you're a D6 uh, customer that uses our SAMS program, so the curriculum admin or finance, that part of the system, then um, you can actually turn on the integration with Too Simple 
um, and they will get access to data that you as a school authorize so that they can deliver the products to you um, without you having to do any manual exports or anything like that. So that's the whole backstory about this. And um, they also a supply that we feel we trust um, and think that will help make schools better. And I mean, you can definitely see why um, now looking at this lovely presentation. So yeah, let's quickly see there is something in the chat. Ah, okay, Marinda said, thank you so much for showing us all the nice things. Thank you, Marinda. Thank yeah. you. And with that, I think we're going to close the session now. So thank you for staying on and for being part of it. Thank you, Karen, for giving us that wonderful presentation. We'll share the, the recording with um, the people that attended. And then also, uh, Marty, if you snippets on social media, so keep an eye out for that. Hope Thanks, you all enjoy everyone. the long week. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.